kind of like a war zone. Every day we go out and we, we battle graffiti. It's a battle you can keep on top of. Um, whether or not we'll win it, uh, that's not really the issue. It's, uh, it's just doing our best and um, keeping it under control. First we do reconnaissance with light vehicles. So we've got a giant black spray bomb on the northeast side on a pillar at BC Play Stadium. That way you know we're not spending a lot of money going out there looking for graffiti. We're going out there to identify it first. And then we sort of send a second wave in of what we consider sort of the heavy equipment and the certified technicians. It does really require reconnaissance first, I think, to be effective. You don't want to be driving around all day searching for graffiti in giant graffiti removal vehicles. So, you know, we employ scooters, push carts. A lot of guys do a lot of foot patrolling. You know, it's the same way you'd go in and assess a military situation before you send in, you know, the heavy artillery. It just came over me like a wave. I was looking out the window and I could see millions of dollars worth of graffiti removal there. And it's, you know, kind of like wading through grass that's shoulder deep and someone one day says, you know, maybe we should cut this. All the things that we're driving by from the street signs to the light poles to mailboxes, fire hydrants, all these things, they have graffiti on them. I bought a truck and a power washer, uh, not a nice truck, a pretty nice power washer though. And, uh, and away I went. I just went to Home Depot and I went to Home Hardware and everywhere I could to find paint removers and strippers. And I ended up with about 70, maybe 100 products. And away I went trying to get this graffiti off for people. And eventually we figured out how to do it. But without our own chemistry, without our own graffiti removal system, I, I think it was going to be short lived. Our main focus is to help our clients preserve their assets. If you thought this was terrible and it was destroying your personal space, your asset, then that's where we come in. Graffiti is an eyesore. It was a concern to our communities, our public and there was a lot more of it around than I initially thought. Graffiti has been around since the Stone Ages and it's not going to go away. So it's one of those markets that's there for uh, the taking. First we, we built a graffiti removal business and then we, we developed a, an industry and then we started to franchise which in itself is another business. I've been able to kind of uh, make this business into more and different companies as we've grown it and, it, and, and the production side of things has been fascinating. We're ready to branch out with our own production company now and produce possibly private label chemistry for other retailers. My mantra used to be if we're not making any mistakes today. We're not doing a good enough, aggressive enough, fast enough job. Like, you've really got to push it. You've got to encourage people to take chances. And if you're too conservative, then you're never going to grow your business. You're always going to find political protests, graffiti. You're always going to find uh, different types of public statements that might be made through graffiti. Graffiti's not going to go away. If I can find myself in Paris or somewhere in Greece and still working and earning a living with this company, that's, you know, that's pretty special. I'd like to be able to do that someday.